Welcome to the Skillic Explains Finance video. This week, why investors should not dismiss the UK's growing deficit. So what is it and why would you care? Now, recent headlines are focused on this. We've got Reuters saying British current account deficit balloons, whatever that is. We've got the Telegraph saying we've got the worst external deficit in history just recently. And we've got the FT saying current account deficit hits new post-war high. So the media certainly getting very excited about it. The question is, as an investor, should you also be worried? Now, in a nutshell, what is this thing and how big is it? We are running a big current account deficit by historical standards, certainly in the three months to December 2015, bearing in mind it takes a while to compile this data, hence the reference point, it was running at around 33 billion sterling. To put that in context, that's about 7% of all wealth, gross domestic product, produced in the UK over that period. If you want an annual number for 2015 as a whole, looking backwards, as we always do with this figure, it was around 96 billion, or about 5% of total annual GDP. So, where's it come from? Now, there are two key components, really. I'll deal with both. The first one is the trade balance. That's pretty key. A lot of the current account deficit or surplus is rooted in the relationship that we have with other countries in terms of exports and imports. So we export essentially two things, goods and services. Services includes financial services like and tourism. So when people come over here and visit Buckingham Palace and spend money here, we talk about exporting the Queen, for example. So tangible goods, intangible services, and of course we import goods and services too. And the difference between those two numbers is captured in something called the trade balance, which could be positive, but tends not to be for us because we import a lot more than we export. So we tend to run a trade deficit, if you ever hear that expression. Now to turn that trade deficit into what for us is a current account deficit and quite a big and growing one, you make a couple of adjustments. The main one being what's called net investment income, in a way. And that reflects the fact that by investing overseas, we receive income from those investments. And equally, people who invest here, who are fairly important to our economy, expect to receive something in return, hence net investment income. Add that lot together, and you get to what for the UK is a current account deficit. Potentially a problem. We'll see why in a moment. Now, who's who? Current account deficits tend to be run by big importing and or developed mature economies. So think UK, US, India, France, China. They're not all importing and exporting the, exactly the same things and the same balance. But they tend to be countries running that kind of trade overdraft, if you want to see it that way. On the flip side of the coin, this is like a zero-sum game. So somebody's got to be running current account surpluses. They tend to be the big exporting countries. They're not all exporting the same things, but China, Germany and Europe, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Switzerland all tend to run quite large current account surpluses. And you might think, well, because it's a zero-sum game, in other words, if I export, someone else is importing, why do we care about Britain's position in relation to the rest of the world? I'll come to that in just a moment. Now, what could go wrong? Basically, in, on the face of it, nothing. I mean, you export, you import, you're trading with the rest of the world. But the point is this. As the Bank of England's Governor Mark Carney has said, to some extent, by running a big deficit overdraft, if you want to see it that way, we rely on the kindness of strangers. We rely on the willingness of overseas lenders, if you like, to fund this overdraft. It's a bit like if you run a personal bank overdraft, you're relying on the kindness of your bank to keep you going. And they might do that for years and years and years, provided they're confident you will pay that overdraft back at some point. And there's the nub of this, if you want to see it that way with a bit of artistic license. How confident is the rest of the world that we can actually continue to fund our overdraft and eventually perhaps clear it, if you want to see it that way? And that's the key. And really, the catch-22 is this, because the key barometer of confidence in our ability to pay as a nation is called our currency, sterling. Now, here's the catch-22. One way to get rid of this deficit or reduce it would be improve the trade balance, boost exports, limit imports. And the currency war headlines you've seen recently are countries trying to do that. Because the way you do that is you weaken your currency, which makes what you export cheaper for other people, what you import from other people more expensive. But here's the catch-22. You might think, well, great, just keep weakening the currency, you'll solve the problem. The catch-22 is this. If lenders suddenly lose faith in our currency and our ability to repay debts, what they might do is repatriate funds, suck them out of the UK, sell sterling as they go, 
and that creates the danger of a full-blown currency crisis, which is kind of beyond the control of a central bank. So how would you stop that happening if there was a threat of it? Well, the Bank of England might one day have to step in and raise interest rates to protect the currency. And that's why this big, amorphous, blobby thing called the deficit actually could be relevant to investors. It's certainly something to keep an eye on. It's not something I'm going to panic about. I'm not necessarily going to panic like some of the press headlines would want you to, but we are going to keep an eye on it as investors. Now, lots of ground covered there, lots of big picture economics. Questions, please, to the usual place.